Enter, exit. Okay, that sounds really weird. <laughs> Everybody, what is up? My name is Mackenzie. And I'm Jonathan. We are husband and wife, and we'd like to welcome you to Paradise. All right, let's talk about something game adjacent, escape rooms. Okay, I love escape rooms. The escape game, Clue Chase, all these fun places where you go into a room, they lock you in, and you gotta solve puzzles and make your way out. So you're like, does this fit, does that fit? And you're running around trying to plug things. Oh my gosh, it is so much fun. And you may have heard that there are different like escape room type subscription things where you can get mail home, like play at home type experiences. And they're all right. I mean, they, they work okay, but we played one recently that actually gave us the feeling that we were in an escape room and it was a whole lot of fun. So it is a whole series of games. Without further ado, enter, exit. Okay, that sounds really weird. <laughs> So Exit the Game is by Cosmos, and it is essentially an escape room in a box. And they have a whole series of them. I think there are about 20 yep. at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and they are fabulous. We had a chance and opportunity to try three, and they come in all different levels to match like the what, how hard you want the escape room to be. And man, these pack a punch. I really <laughs> enjoyed each of these experiences. And what was the coolest part is that they are so different. Now, this is gonna be a little interesting to talk about these because I don't wanna spoil anything. So we're gonna talk about these games without actually talking about these games, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about one basic thing. So I, in all the escape rooms, I'll put over here so I don't like show you anything I don't mean to. Um, but in all of these escape rooms, you get this deck of cards. Uh, so a deck of cards is very common. It says, stop. Do not open me. <laughs> but once you kind of get past that, uh, you're gonna see a series of answer cards, which mm -hmm. are these blue cards. And then you're gonna see a series of hint cards, which are these green cards. And then you'll see a series of riddle cards, which are these like reddish cards. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be true of all exit games that you play, at least so far that we've seen. Um, and so that's kind of the core of the game. And so you're sometimes given a book. You're always given one of these like codex styles which has all the different like riddles that you're trying to solve. You gotta like map yeah. these things up. And you'll usually yeah. use these to find codes to unlock doors, to unlock boxes, to unlock all sorts of different yeah, things. Pages, like, yeah, pages, different things and like that. And all the theming is very different. Like you're either trying to escape, uh, like the abandoned cabin, you're trying to an escape a house that you've been locked into. Yeah. The haunted roller coaster, you are trapped inside. You were on a roller coaster and mm -hmm. now you are trapped inside. And then this it one- like a carnival. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The Dead Man on the Orient Express, it actually like follows loosely that storyline by Agatha Christie. And you are trying to solve who was murdered on the train. And so that was so interesting. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. And usually you have to kind of like solve puzzles. You gotta look around the rooms. There's pictures of rooms. There's all sorts of things. And uh, usually you're trying to find number codes. So you know how in escape rooms, you gotta find those locks and it's like, okay, the combo is one, five, nine. Mm -hmm. You gotta find the thing that that goes to. Uh, and then you gotta type in the one, five, nine uh, to your little codex and, and see if that gets you where you need to go. Mm -hmm. uh, now what I love about it, one of my absolute favorite things about this setup. So I showed you there's the riddle cards, there's the answer cards, uh, and then there's the like clue cards. So for each riddle that you have to solve, uh, there will be a like symbol associated with it. So this could be the star, this could be the square. Um, and I start looking for the square. So I come up with what I think the combo is gonna be. I'm like, I think it's 159. Mm -hmm. So you type it into the codex and it tells you, look at answer card number 14. So I pull up answer card number 14 and it's gonna show me either like a big red X that was like, nope, you're way off. And it's gonna taunt me with some funny text about how the murder is getting away or something <laughs> funny like that. Um, but if it doesn't show a red X, it might just tell you it's right, but more likely it's going to show you a list of items that uh, your lock could go to. So mm -hmm. if you see like, a, let's say it's like a lock box with like a heart shaped lock on it or something like that, um, you'll see a whole bunch of lock boxes on the cards and one of them will be that lock box that you're looking at. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm looking for this lock box number. So that will tell me to go to card number 30 and I'll go over to card number 30 and it will either tell me if it's right or wrong. Now what's amazing about this is that for every combination of these things that you can try, you're never gonna spoil yourself. You're yeah. never gonna flip over the card and find, oh, I was wrong, but it was actually this other thing. 
you the only way to find the correct answer is to actually put in the right code. Yeah, which that, I, was I was awesome. very impressed with that because when I was first like getting to play and I saw like it was in the deck, I was like, oh, you're just gonna be able to see like what it is. Like if you get it wrong, it'll just tell you the right answer. Yeah. Nope, yeah. you have to find the right answer, <laughs> and it is hard, especially depending on the level that you try. So I want to go into like levels a little bit. So yeah. we have here we have abandoned cabin is a two and a half. Haunted Roller Coaster mm -hmm. is a two, and Dead Man on the Orient Express is a four. And I think, oh no, it can go up to five. So this is a four, and Ooh. we played a, <laughs> a level five. Um, so the first one we tried was two and a half, and... Um, this was a great one to start That was with. a great one. It was really mm -hmm. good. Uh, to me, I thought that one was one of the hardest. Just uh, honestly, it's because you have to like learn how the puzzles work. And yeah. you yeah. have to learn, like, you will need pencil, you are gonna need scissors, you're gonna need paper, you are going to be ripping up this book, you're going okay, to be well, tearing we said it, scissors. drawing yeah, it. Yeah, so. Yeah, so like, and this is like, you, like, mm -hmm. uh, let me just say this, nothing is off limits in this game. Like, <laughs> be as creative as you want, because that yeah. is what the designers have done. Um, it's just like an escape room where you're tearing things apart, you're trying to figure out like what to do, and it will give you like hints, like, they'll be like, do not tear this. You need this, um, but it's very, <laughs> very fun. But I would say that- but Because of the tearing. Yeah. It's a one-time thing. Yes, yeah. it is a one-time use. So that's very important mm -hmm. to note. However, they are like $15 a piece. And mm -hmm. when you go to an escape room, you're each paying $15. 15, 20 a person. Yeah. yeah. So to me, it feels like you're just paying for like a cheap, t like like a one-off experience, like a fun night at home yeah. or with friends. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was worth it. Um, the Haunted Roller Coaster, I would say was easier, but the puzzles were so different. The Haunted Roller Coaster gave you a lot more blatant answers. I feel like it was like, oh, okay, that's obviously, we gotta go look for that thing. Um, mm -hmm. Which you could kinda, with some of them, you could almost force it, even if you didn't quite understand the riddle, you could kinda go back and forth until it lined up and it looked right. Um, so I think that was a little bit of it, but there were some major, major surprises in this one. Yeah, creativity um, for sure. I just, I think what I loved was among these three, you have a core rule set, so you have those cards. Um, but mm -hmm. beyond that, the way they use these components and the way that they made you do things, there's 18 of them, so there's got to be some overlap, 20. I would think. Or 20 of them. There's got to be some overlap, I would think. Mm -hmm. But between these three, there was almost no overlap. Uh, it was pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. it was really mm -hmm. cool. And then Dead Man on the Orient Express, that was my favorite. <laughs> but it was the hardest. I mean, yeah. like, it, I think, like, the puzzles definitely depend on the person. Um, and these puzzles just, like, clicked for me, and they didn't click as much for him. And Abandoned Cabin clicked a lot more for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was really interesting. That's I'm also true. super into, like murder mystery so i connected with the theme a lot more That's so true. how you win per se or you are it's like on a ranking so at the end of the game you are going to be timing yourself from the moment you start and at the end <laughs> once you have gotten through and you have escaped um or solved it or whatever you need to do to complete the game mm -hmm. um you will stop that timer and then you will check the back and then you will take off you will see how many clue cards you had to use and add on that amount of time and then you'll check to see what level you're at yeah and yeah. so it's you'll get a rating out of 10 stars so we usually got like six stars or something mm -hmm. but it's you know you have a lot to strive no, for i think this. we did expert on the banning cabin yeah we might have gotten like nine stars yeah but there are yeah. also five yeah. of us working on that so i think the more people <laughs> you have the different brain power but yeah. that being said, I enjoyed this immensely as a two player because I think it is a really fun date night because you're yeah. both working together. You're both trying to solve like a mystery and a puzzle. And like, I might be mm. biased, but I enjoyed these exit games more than going to an escape room. Um, <laughs> and like, I know some people wouldn't find that as fun, but I did because people actually could listen to me. I feel like in an escape room, I'm always like, it's over here, guys, it's over here. And they're like <laughs> off doing something else. But here at the table, Guilty. I was like, listen to me. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, what I was so surprised with like how close it was to an actual escape room experience. Yes, yeah. Um, they play about one to two hours. Yeah. Uh, and what I will say that I loved about this, we played other things that were very similar, uh, like Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is kind of like a, you're solving a yes. mystery from a book. Where these were stand out, they felt very kind of like free roam, like open world. Like you, you could look in any order and it's like you had the next puzzle you were supposed to do, but 
you could do some digging. Everything was kind of open to you. I'm, I'm gonna give a light spoiler on the haunted, or the abandoned cabin. Um, this does not affect the gameplay at all. It's something you see right away. Um, but when you open it up, you actually get walls of the cabin. Uh, and so you each is like a picture that you can look at. And so it's like you're looking around, oh, those are interesting details. Look what's on those shelves. Look what's behind that door. Mm -hmm. uh, and that becomes very important uh, for like a lot of the puzzles. So I, I think that that was something that was really, really cool, that there was always something for someone to do. Even if you weren't the one looking at the riddle card, mm -hmm. you might be observing and taking everything in, just like you would in a real escape room. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, and I will say, because I think someone will say it, the theming, while I, this one was definitely the most theme heavy, the others kind of like poke fun at themselves for being like, oh, <laughs> you open this box. Oh my goodness, there's riddle card R in it. Like <laughs> who would have guessed the riddle card guessed? R? <laughs> yeah, so it does like poke fun at itself and some of the narration is just trying to like lead you to the correct like riddle card. Like like they yeah. just say like grab the card. Or it's like you're yeah. you're you're locked in like the cabin and they're like, and you found this decoder. That's not that nice. Yeah, but that <laughs> said, I, I don't think that anything was too leading in these. Like no, in the no, sense no. that you would be like, that can't possibly be, is that it? Yeah. And you go type it in, you're like, oh my gosh, that was it. It was like, yeah. it, it, they actually were hard puzzles. Yeah, you know? I, I, it was cool. Yeah. It was like, yeah, just think out of the box. That's like where you go with this. It, it was really cool. I enjoyed yeah. it a lot. And I can't wait to like, we, Cosmos was nice with us and gave us these three, but um, we both want to go buy another for oh, ourselves. We're more. And we want to go bring them with friends because it's we're a lot of more. fun. We're getting more. <laughs> All right, everyone, and that is our review of Exit the Game. Thank you so much to Cosmos for sending these to us. We had a blast. I will have links down below where you can get these specific copies or check out the rest of the Exit series. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know whenever we put out a new video. And we'll see you next time. Happy, Happy playing. playing.